Well, folks, welcome to this week's of Sportsman's Life. Jeff and Larry, we are ready to hunt. We have eaten a bunch of fish at camp right here. I guess, you know, fish fry, the fish is the main course, but it'd be a shame not to have a few potatoes cooked with it, wouldn't it? Get them. Oh, yeah. Potatoes go well. You gotta have it. I thought I'd show you a couple of implements, cooking implements, that I think you, you need. <laughs> you have to have now this. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real-world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. pretty good you know one thing you learn about camp cooking drop something like that on the ground not a problem though it not grease you're gonna be heating it, heating it up to a point that's not gonna now my wife may uh, you know she may have different thoughts on that your wife's not here she's not here <laughs> so I can cook like I want to right yeah my wife would as long as she didn't see me do it that, well that's it I <laughs> see you have as much experience with wives as you and I do, Larry. You can uh, absolutely you can make adjustments. We, you know? We've learned, haven't we? <laughs> that's right. Look, that's not going to take very long for them taters to fry. Not going to take long, is it, buddy? We're going to do it the Canada way and throw some onion in just at the last, <laughs> right? I guess you know, fish fry. The fish is the main course, but it. Be a shame not to have a few potatoes cooked with it, wouldn't it? Get them. Oh yeah, potatoes go well. You gotta have it. And the last one. Ant cooking. That's what I'm talking about. It. There we go. But you know, like we were talking a little bit earlier, one thing for sure on this camp cooking and all that, if you forget one thing. I mean, of course, I don't. I live a mile and a half from here, but sometimes we're out doing this kind of stuff where we don't live a mile and a half, aren't we? That's correct. And at that but time, pretty it, good about remembering to bring everything. So yeah, make a list and you know check it twice, right? That's right. <laughs> and if you ain't got it, do without. That's right. <laughs> I know a man that actually lived up in the Arctic for days, eating nothing but raw gravy. Raw grayling and it's the guy behind the camera mr white and i was very appreciative of the grayling <laughs> that i was catching sushi never tasted it oh man probably, you know? never tasted as good well we'll just let this go a little bit when it gets just about right we'll throw a handful of onion in there and i think we'll be there Oh, I just drifted over here just then. I mean, it, you, oh my God, that smells good. You're right. It'll taste better than it smells even, I guarantee it. Then we're going to go out and kill something. Uh, I think we're going to go, I'm not sure we're going to prepare. If we do kill a coyote, I have eaten coyote. Have it's, you really? it, yes, it's not, it, it is tasty, but the tasty isn't very good. <laughs> so what part to eat, the back strap? Kind of, hind, well? hind quarter. Hind quarter? Yeah. I'll be done. Yeah, I've had it two or three different ways just yeah. to try it and I just, no, it's not one of my favorites. Huh. I can honestly say I've never tried it. I'm not saying I would. I would, I would suggest not <laughs> to. I think you're right on that. I, do y'all pronounce those ready? I think they are. Good to me. Much longer they'll be too ready. Oh yeah. Life is good. Got a little fish. Oh, 
put a little more oil in here for our fish. Glomp, 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 glomp. All right. There we go. And I wish I had been the one to invent this little thing. A guy down in Louisiana invented that little. This oh little man, thing. yeah. And man, it you know you don't get your cornmeal all wet like you do normally. Drain a little of that. There we go. Okay, so yeah, so we just cornmeal's in the bottom. Just pop that thing and. Turn it over. Shake and not stirred. Shake and not, yep. <laughs> and then from here, chunk, chunk, chunk. Right there, just right, let her go. Oh, our next batch will be ready. Ready to go. Not bad. Look at that. That's delicious. This will get us by until we get something. <laughs> Energy for the hunt. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Time to eat. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club. Conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday. Accurate, deadly, dependable. Taurus Firearms. Maker of the Raging Hunter. Trigicon, Brilliant Aiming Solutions. Well, folks, welcome to this week's of Sportsman's Life. Jeff and Larry, we are ready to hunt. We have eaten a bunch of fish at camp right here. We're at a buddy of mine, a neighbor of mine, actually, about a half a mile from my house. Lots of hogs and a lot of coyotes, a lot of deer. And we're going to try to, you guys are going to go across the slough and try to uh, relieve this area of a coyote or two, right? Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> that, that is the plan. And, and I've got one of uh, Gary Burnham, I mean, Burnham Brothers, Gary Robertson's calls, his ultrasonic calls. And we played around with this one a bunch of other places. And we've always called up coyotes. Now, that may have been the kiss of death right there. because. <laughs> but last time I was out here with you guys, particularly with Kenneth and you, yeah. Luke, we ended up calling up an old coyote that uh, we learned some things about it. I talked to Gary about it afterwards. I've called up a lot of coyotes, but I've never seen one that had come in and lay down and then kind of move around. And finally, I started squeaking just like, before I had the call, and he came in talk to Gary about that and Gary said basically what that the sign of is that was not the dominant coyote here so that was his submissive behavior of laying down thinking that there was a uh, uh, an alpha male if you will you know on, on the dying rabbit set. That, that makes sense Larry because yeah. if you remember that old coyote was chewed up I mean he, he was, was chewed up around his face yeah. and the legs and all that yeah. kind of thing so Maybe we can call in that dominant yeah, Let's coyote. get the dominant one. <laughs> yeah. If he's bigger than the, the subordinate, he's going to be a big one. I'll tell you what, that, that was a big coyote. He was, and, and uh, yeah, Kenneth shot that with his uh, 375. Uh, 375 Winchester. Open, open sights. Sight. And it's on a, uh, oh, I don't know, last month's, one of our segments from last mm -hmm. month. So, well, boys, let's get down there, uh, know where the boat's located, and uh, get in that boat. Go across the slough, and then you'll be back in, in coyote country, I do believe. All righty. Ready to go. Let's go get Let's do it. Let's <laughs> loading up and grab another camera or two and see what we can come up with.
Oaks is going to make it to the other side of the slough and set up to hunt coyotes back in there probably about three or four hundred yards from that other bank. Water's not deep, but this is the only way to get across, really. they made it to the other side and there's the blind that they're going to set up in. It gives them a good visibility of the field back there. So let's wish them good luck. Hope they get a big old coyote or three out of this country. Lots of coyotes out here now. And as we all know, the fawns are going to be hitting the ground before too very much longer. to the hertz, which is a measurement of, of sound. Most electronic game calls go to about 20,000 hertz. Bobcats can hear up to 65,000 hertz. Coyotes up to 40,000 hertz. This particular call takes that sound up to above 40,000 hertz, so it sounds more like to the coyote or the bobcat the sound that an animal really makes when it's in distress. So Gary spent several years in development of this and finally this is one of the very first ones that he's released. I hunted with Gary quite a bit in the past on different places and generally this call works when nothing else does. It's windy this afternoon, a whole lot windier than what I'd like for it to be if I were just going out to call, but we've only got one afternoon. So I think what we're going to do is just kind of sit here for a little bit, see if that wind drops a little bit, and if it does, then we'll start calling. If not, we'll just start calling anyway.
Okay, so I cut on that. The folks were uh, trying to trail one. Pretty sure I hit him, but uh, Larry said he was wobbly, so I'll just go take us a quick peek. Yes, these little folks are unbelievably tough. Yes, they are. There, there's no doubt you hit him. I think you hit him twice. Oh, you hit him hard on the first time. The second time I was trying, trying to stay on you because the two the hog was still far to the left. But then I got on him again as he disappeared back here. And of course, I lost him, but it looked to me like he was slowing down. He looked like he was wobbling a little bit yeah, yeah, he, when he was running. There was a point in there, it looked like he was wobbling pretty good. Well, and he so may be right up here ahead and make a little circle on him. See a black spot right in there. I'll have to yeah, check that out. Yeah, just place for it right there. We'll ease back in there. If not, we'll... What a fun night, though. Huh? Oh, absolutely fantastic. Lots of wind, folks. Unfortunately, that's I think killed us for um, the coyotes. To for me, sure. if, if you and I were kind of talking in the blind, were it that we had tomorrow and the next day to hunt with the call, I wouldn't even call tonight. Yeah. The wind Take the night off. Hard. It was really whipping. <laughs> it took the 20, 30 miles an hour. I think it <laughs> We'll make one little circle back here in the night. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Air Force Air Guns, AGM Global Vision, H3 Whitetail Solutions, Pyramid Air, Gear the Hunt, Snap Lock Hunting Blinds, Smoke and Tex, Striper Express, TRHP Outdoors, and Ultramatic Feeders. Got the fire burning this morning, getting ready for some coffee. Luke's back there in the background working on uh, some biscuits and sausage with his camp chef and just waiting for this coffee to get ready. Not a ground one in that, huh? How about that? That's what they call water does. That kind of water does. It settled under that from years ago. Yep. Grab a cup and we'll uh, partake of some good camp coffee. Nothing better. Exactly your scratch biscuits, but by golly, they're quick and easy. You know, I friend of mine, I, yep, I did. I was just going to tell you, we used to call those womp biscuits. <laughs> What'd you call them? Womp. Womp. womp that's why. That's, that's the sound that they make womp. when it breaks open, by golly. Well, we'll have that <clears throat> with some good old venison sausage, by oh, golly. Goodness. And I think we'll be. We'll be eating pretty good. Yeah, we're gonna eat really good. That's what, what a great way to cap off. Unfortunately, Jeff had to get back because he had to go back to work this morning early. Either. <coughs> yeah, I talked to our to our host, uh, you know, Kevin Ken, Shepard. Yeah. He's off off our best and relatives, but he said next time I want to be with you. So <laughs> well, I said, well, we're gonna see to it that you are. Let's put these in the oven. Right? Kenneth, I'm gonna eat your share of biscuits this morning <laughs> and. and uh, Drink your share of coffee until you come back with us. So we'll, <laughs> here we go, right in the old camp shaft oven. And we got to cut these down real low, these uh, Some venison, of course, mixed with mixed with pork, you know. Has to has to be mixed with pork. Oh yeah. Yeah, let's just let those yeah, simmer and drink us some coffee and we'll keep relax. Back a few minutes and be biscuits be ready and Yes sir. Everything else will be. You betcha. Conservation Today is brought to you by Hayden Outdoors Real Estate, the brand that sells the land. Visit HaydenOutdoors.com to find or sell your farm, ranch, or recreational property. Well, if your primary interest in a hunting ranch is mule deer, 
In West Texas, they've got animals that'll grow their whole life on the same ranch. Western Kansas on the river bottom is similar to that, but there's some parts of the West where you have a migrating herd. So you can have pictures in the late fall of giant mule deer bucks, but in the summer and early fall during hunting season, they may be 100 miles away. So make sure when you look at a ranch, and if it's a mule deer you're interested in, that those deer are local deer or that the migration is happening during hunting season on that piece of property. Hi folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton and welcome to our outdoor show for this week. I thought I'd show you a couple of implements, cooking implements that I think you, you need. <laughs> you have to have, now this, this is a Dutch kettle folks, it's a number 10 Dutch kettle. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the care of Dutch kettles a little bit too, but you see me cooking on this quite a bit. Has the legs on it, you know, that, that way you can put the coals underneath it. Uh, but a number 10 Dutch kettle, and a, the, uh, the only kind of Dutch kettle I like is a useful one with a recessed lid. So you can see this thing has a recessed lid to put the coals on it. You can see the old ashes from the coals that I had here on this one. So a Dutch kettle like this will bake biscuits, it'll make stew, uh, it'll cook quail. <laughs> you know, you can use it for a million uh, different applications and you can use it at camp with uh, either charcoal briquettes or uh, you know embers from the campfire either one so uh, an outdoor person needs a Dutch kettle gotta have it essential gear if you will here's something else that I have carried around for many many years it's a it's actually made by Lodge you would not believe the meals that I've cooked in this old skillet right here yeah it's Lodge probably had it I don't know how long. <clears throat> it's a deep skillet, cast iron, with a good heavy lid on it. You can take this skillet, folks, with this lid, and you can tenderize a water buffalo, I guess. I mean, it for slow cooking, you can't beat it. So a good Dutch kettle, you know, with a recessed lid for cooking with fire. This I use over a propane burners or whatever, you know, my skillet, or for frying breakfast, you know, whatever. It's got a lot of uses. And you can tell it's been used a lot too. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about cleaning cast iron. Uh, if you read any manuals on cast iron, they're gonna tell you, do not put water on cast iron. Well, malarkey, <laughs> to be frank with you. I've used water, okay, say, say for instance, say for instance, we've cooked a blackberry cobbler in this. We got a little bit too much crust on the bottom that's stuck to the bottom. You're gonna have to put soap and warm water in it and let it set. It, it doesn't rust the inside like some people might have you think. Yeah, granted, if you left it out there a month, it probably would. Put the water, put the soap in it, let it set. Let that thing, let that soap do its magic and uh, the next day, take a brush, scrub it all out, wash it out good, but do this. Take a little cooking oil on a paper towel, wipe the inside with it. It'll lubricate it, you know, and keep it from from uh, from rusting. Of course, the old skillet here, you don't really, if you're frying something in it, just clean it up good and just make sure it's a little oil, a little coat of oil, cooking oil. There's one other thing that I would like to show you that I use a lot cooking outdoors. It's a, it's a little oven. And I think we'll go out here in my little building. I'm gonna show you a picture of it. And it's, you bake, if you don't wanna use the, the rustic way of cooking stuff, this oven is propane and you can bake biscuits on it, bake cobblers in it, whatever. Here is that oven, outdoor oven I was telling you about. It's a camp chef, I've used it for several years, but you can actually bake inside here. I've baked cobblers, I've baked, you name it. Anything you can bake in the house, you can bake right here. Of course, you've got your on top here, you've got your uh, burners, couple of burners, and you just basically fuel this thing up with a, a small propane bottle and it'll cook for a long time. But it's handy to have, you know, everything you won't be cooking on a campfire, but this little camp chef oven is very, very handy and it'll get the job done. We want to thank you for joining us here on this week's episode. Please join us right back here next week for another exciting adventure on a sportsman's life.